What's good, Eagles fans? This is your boy, Tone Dishills the second. You guys are locked in on your dose of chalk it up. Where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just gotta charge it to the game. I wanna talk to you guys about Jordan Maylada, the $64 million man, maybe an $80 million man. We got this guy locked up for the next four or five seasons until about 2025. But I wanna talk about his performance, most importantly. His debut as the starting left tackle. His debut as the $64 million bodyguard. He did not give up any sacks that entire time in Atlanta. He came out of the game just, he came into the game just manhandling guys, putting guys in the dirt, making guys feel less than, just violating these guys' souls, violating their spirit, making them, making them just look like little boys. Like I said, he didn't give up not one sack. And the only sack that was given up was only at the Hertz extended the play. And it wasn't his fault. The, the play was extended about four or five seconds and my man had to wheel all the way around behind the lineman. And you know, at their certain point, lineman can't block behind the back. So that wasn't really no one else's fault. But he was just throwing bodies around. His biggest and his most impactful block of the day was on safety, Richie Gant, number 27, during the Jalen Rager screen pass for a touchdown. I, re I That's... Lately, I've been falling in love with offensive line play. Lately, I've truly been digging into the nuances of the position and just the shifting and how these guys have assignments and how they delegate those assignments and how they double team block and then they may shift over and the stunts and it's it's all beautiful. The be beautiful O-line play is so understated, so underrated. And Jordan Milada was in his bag. I don't want to forget guys like Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, and Jason Kelsey, who, who was a man on the motion, Isaac Samalu. Our weakest offensive lineman is Isaac Samalu, and that's not a bad thing. Isaac Samalu can start anywhere in his NFL at guard. And that's facts. But Jordan Milada, he's the he's he's the pseudo rookie out of all those guys. He's the young blood out of all those guys. He's the most inexperienced. And his ability to just grow and develop at such a fast rate he's only 24 25 something like that he's he's not even not even past the halfway point of his 20s he's already at this level in his career talent wise skill wise development wise the entire old line was virtually impregnable you couldn't sneak past those guys they had to run game on lock they had Jalen, they had Jalen Hurts virtually protected the entire game now, granted, there was a handful of false start penalties. There was there was a holding penalty here and there. But Jordan Milada, I think he only made one mistake, and that was a false start. But I think that was just his eagerness, him just wanting to jump off the ball. And I'm never going I'm never going to get mad at an offensive lineman who's ready to just put hands and feet in the defensive end's face. I'm never going to get mad at that. Now, I do get mad at it when it puts us in compromising positions and it sacrifices scoring. His false start or his mistake didn't necessarily do that. But there was barely, barely offensive holding. Barely. I think if there was only one on our side, most, mostly everything was false starts. But Hertz was rel went relati relatively untouched considering his elusiveness and how consistent the offensive line was all day. The team made it up the game. The offensive line made it up the game with no injuries. That entire offensive line from Jordan Milano all the way down to Lane Johnson they played 100% of the snaps. When's the last time we had offensive linemen play 100% of the snaps? Uh, if, unless, unless your name is Jason Kelsey, of course. But when's the last time? This offensive line is built to last. And we still got guys like Lander Dickerson waiting. Got uh, Herbig waiting. Jack Driscoll chilling in the background, you know, just resting his hand. We still got Andre Dillard. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with Andre Dillard trade-wise or cut-wise. I doubt they'll do anything with him unless the deal is right. It's, but it's not bad to have a guy like that backing up Jordan Milano at the end of the day. That's first-round talent. Someone just has to figure out a way to tap into it. But Jordan Milano, the $64 million man, he shined. He shined. And I'm just so glad that we found the anchor on the left side. The Philadelphia Eagles have been so blessed in years past when you think about the left tackle position. We went from Trey Thomas to... Jason Peters, and now Jordan Melada. And Jordan Melada, Jordan Melada, just based off his measurables, his physical tangibles, he has potential to be better than both of those guys. He has the potential. 
I'm not saying he is yet. Jason Peters is an all pro more than one time over. Jason Peters is a Hall of Famer, most likely. Trey Thomas, a very reliable, very stout, a guy that was unshakable in his career. That man barely gave up anything. Trey Thomas is a Philly legend, and that's facts. But Jordan Milata, he has the potential to really submit himself in Eagles lore. That man's story is, is a movie. That man was an Australian rugby player. Did not know a lick of football. Did not know how to put on the helmet. Did not know how to put on the pads. Barely knew how to drink the Gatorade through the face mask. And this man is now a $64 million man. This man is the star left tackle for, for the Philadelphia Eagles. We drafted him in the seventh round. And he doing what he, and he's doing what he's doing to these guys. Now, the Atlanta Falcons, don't get it twisted. We know they're not the best team. We know their defense is the best. They don't really have a crazy pass rush. But... They have some pretty talented guys on the edge. We got we, we got we got to give them credit for that. But Jordan Milata, that man was a, was on a mission the entire game. And one of my concerns was paying him this amount of money. Would he be able to perform? Knowing he just got paid, knowing he just signed the dotted line, and he proved that he. It, 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 it don't matter what's going on. It don't matter what the big account looking like. My man is gonna show up. He's gonna show up. That man, he said in his press conference, I don't care how much money I make. I'm just, I'm, I'm glad I'm able to give my family the life they deserve and, you know, put on for my people, put on for my country. That's all I care about, really, the glory. I care about, I care about being the best I can be. I care about getting 1% better every single day. That's the kind of guy you want right there, that humble demeanor, the guy who's all about family, all about football, all about putting on for his, his, uh, his people, the city. You can't get mad at that. And that's all I have. I'm your humble host, Tony the Shows the Second. You guys are locked in on your dose to chalk it up. What no matter if we win or if we lose, we just gotta charge to the game. More love, stay humble, stay healthy. Most importantly, stay hungry. And fly was fly.